welcome everyone to Spiritism at Home by Spirit, the Spiritist Group of New York. And uh, as you know, we all are always studying passages from books that can enlighten us. And today we have chosen to read from this book by, oh, let me see if I can show it by Chico Xavier that is called Good News and mm -hmm. the Spirit Umberto de Campos. So the way we are going to do it is we are going to to read the first chapter uh, entirely and then we will comment at the end, you know, the passages that touch this more, okay? Okay. Uh, the book was uh, written by the spirit Umberto de Campos through the psychography of uh, Chico Xavier, and it was published by Fabi Publisher. So I'm going to share the screen with you. Um, I had I prepared this uh, kind of PowerPoint so we can read uh, from the pages. So the first message of the book is good news. And Umberto de Campos is started like this. Historians of the Roman Empire have always marveled at the profound contrasts of the glorious age of Augustus. In spite of the luster of his noteworthy ascendancy, Gaius Julius Caesar Octavianus had come to power as the result of a series of fortunate events. The upper echelons of the former republic could not fathom his triumph. In order to thwart Marcus Antonius from usurping the throne, he had formed an alliance with the traitors who had murdered, murdered his adoptive father. But thereafter, thereafter, he found that his intentions always met with gloomy prospects of success. However, his first victories began with the establishing of the triumvirate followed by Antonio's defeats in the East, which cleared the way for him in unexpected ways. As, <clears throat> sorry, as if the world sensed a blessed renewal of values, every single Roman legion quickly surrendered without resistance to the adopted son of the murdered sovereign. A new era had begun with the determined magnanimous young man. As though influenced by an assemblage of unknown forces, the greatest empire on earth now rested on a wave of harmony and high spirits after centuries of dreadful wars. Grand temples and monuments were erected everywhere. The anthem of a lasting peace is started in Rome and is stretched to its remotest provident provinces, accompanied by broad manifestations of joy by the nameless suffering plebeians. The city of the Caesars was populated by artists and nobles productive spirits. The sacred emotion of security was present everywhere as the organism of the laws was being renewed, distributing the benefits of education and justice. However, the distinguished emperor was feeble and sickly. More than once, the chronicles of the time refer, refer to the source that covered his skin, which from time to time felt like painful darts. Octavian was never completely healthy. His legs were always rapid in bandage and his chest was conveniently protected 
against the blasts of air, which caused him to suffer incessant colds. He frequently complained about excruciating headaches, which were followed by bouts of a peculiar weariness. But that was not the only way that the emperor suffered from the extreme vicissitudes of human life. Although he had revived customs, had restored the purest family traditions, and had been the greatest reorganizer of the empire, he was forced to humiliate his deepest and most delicate sentiments as a father and sovereign by issuing a decree of banishment against his only daughter, exiling her to the island of Pendateria due to her life of reprehensible scandals at court. Later, he was also compelled to take similar measures against his granddaughter. He also became aware that in domestic matters, his beloved wife was involving herself in ongoing incidents entailing the poisoning of his most direct descendants, causing him the most dreadful anxiety of heart. And in spite of everything, however, his name was given to the illustrious era that saw his birth. His many years of governance were marked by remarkable initiatives. The collective soul of the empire had never felt such a sense of stability and joy. The glorious backdrop of Rome had never assembled such a number of outstanding minds. It was during this time that Virgil, Horace, Ovid, Sallust, Leave, and Mecenas emerged as favorites of the gods. Everywhere, superb marble statues were being carved, magnificent gardens shone brightly, palaces and sanctuaries were being built, learning was being protected, and laws of harmony and justice were being implemented in a notion of unparalleled peace. For the time being, the chariots of triumph forsook the laurel wreaths of bloodshed, and the god's victory no longer smiled on acts of destruction and slaughter. The emperor himself, while presiding over grand popular festivals, with a heart anguished by the troubles of his personal life, was often amazed as he witnessed the overall jubilation and tranquility of his people, and unable to explain the mystery of that endless wave of harmony, he would weep with emotion when, from atop his golden platform, he listened to Horace's famous composition from which the following verses of undying beauty is stood out. All fruitful soul, who with your growing chariot opens and closes the day, who always arises anew, yet always the same, may you never see anything greater than Rome. Such was the state of things because historians during the so-called age of Augustus did not realize it was also the age of the gospel, the good news. The lost sight of the fact that the noble Octavian was also a man and that during his reign, they did not know that the sphere of the Christ was approaching the earth in a deep vibration of love and beauty. Bellicose spirits like Alexander or Hannibal were no longer nearing Rome and the rest of the world, but other spirits clad in the rags of fishermen would serve as the imperishable base 
for the eternal teachings of the land. Spirits who would prepare the way for the coming of the Lord and those who would become humble and immortal followers in his divine footsteps were immersing themselves in the spiritual fluids of the planet. That is why the mystical power of the age of Augustus manifested as peace and joy for the people who instinctively sensed that they were on the threshold of a heavenly transformation. The sublime emissary was going to come to the earth. His lesson of truth and light would spread all over the whole world as a shower of exalted, comforting blessings, comforting blessings. At that moment, humanity was living in the times of the good news. It was the wedding feast that Jesus referred to in his imperishable teaching. After that festival of hearts, which served as an indestructible script for humanity's harmony, the gospel would become the most beautiful, expressive book in the world, comprising a permanent message from heaven for individuals in transit of the earth, a map of blessed spiritual heights, a guidebook for the pathway, and a handbook of love, courage, and joy eternal. And in order for such characteristics to remain among be human beings as the expression of his wise will, Jesus recommended to his apostle that they begin their glorious testimony with the hymns and fragrance of nature under the marvelous light of a star guiding kings and shepherds to the rustic manger where the first note of his canticle of love were intoned and end it with a resplendent vision of the humanity of the future in possessing of the blessings of redemption. That is why the gospel of Jesus, the book of love and joy, begins with a depiction of that glorious Christmas night and ends with the far-reaching vision of the liberated Jerusalem foreseen by John in his divine prophecies of the apocalypse. Okay, this <laughs> is... Uh, <laughs> The reading, uh, I, I, I particularly love this book so much. It chapter brings us so much to to think about, and uh, and the way the author describes it, 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 it almost takes us, you know, uh, or in our imagination to be living about those times, to be visualizing. Yeah. all the greatness uh, that it was to be living in those days, in those difficult days, but where they find some respite with the presence of this emperor. So as we know by other authors, uh, the time that it was being prepared for Jesus to reach us it had to be a special time, a time that people would not be that much worried about wars and dissensions and uh, and uh, in all the consequences that war brings, uh, the heavy taxes and all of this. We know for sure that especially when we talk about um, Israel, Jerusalem, and all that land, you know, they, the, the, there was this worry of the domination of Rome. But um, even then, uh, we, have to, we have to remember that for a certain time during the, before the, the birth of Jesus and during the first years of life of Jesus, 
there reigned more peace until the other emperor was uh, uh, took uh, Augustus' place when he died. And it was a favorable time for the energy of that region that was so impacted by everything that was happening, you know, becoming a time of relative peace, so to say, where more important values were putting into place, like when it talks here about uh, having to expel from uh, from his court, even his daughter and granddaughter, and uh, even his wife, because of you know the ways they were conducting their lives. So it, it is very in, in, uh, in, uh, really impressive uh, because it's so easy for us to dictate norms for others and protect our loved ones from those norms, but in this case, the emperor didn't do that. He was the one giving the example saying, listen, even, even in my own home, me being the emperor, I'm not going to be uh, in tune with uh, what we do not consider as being a righteous life. And it was a time that was, uh, you know, propitiating opportunities for artists of you know the writers the uh, the philosophers all of them to be able to to bring their knowledge and to bring this peace and calmness that was what was necessary for this time so that jesus could find a better spiritual atmosphere to come to earth and, and sometimes, you know, we think that things in our, you know, still small way of understanding things of the world, we tend to think that uh, things just happen because they happen, that there is not too much planning before it. And as far as, as we know, there was so much planning and and. and and, and trying to bring the, all the conditions that Christ could, uh, and not only Christ, but after him, his apostles could go and spread all the teachings of the good news, like we said. And, and, and all happened um, when he first, uh, you know, with this... Uh, passage of course of his birth being so significant for all of us and the way it happened and the way it, it brought um, you know people from all regions to come and to meet him in the future years so I, 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 I take from this lesson you know um, this uh, planning, this protection that we have, uh, you know, of course, uh, from God, from from God's mercy, and the messengers that will contribute, the spirits that we will agree to come and reincarnate, and uh, very much like John the Baptist, that he accepted, that you know, to come and being being the one that would be crying out loud about the coming of uh, of the messiahs and 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 not uh, uh, faltering at all in 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 giving his own life once he saw that the prophecies were being fulfilled so by saying now it's no longer my time is the time of jesus like you know he did what he had to do and and also to spread the morals and all of this and um, I mean, there there is so much to for us to comment. I would like to hear for you uh, first and see if uh, there is any of this passages that uh, called your attention uh, in, in in this chapter from the book Good News. Um, Sorida. Uh, 
There is so much here. Yeah. Mm. Uh, one thing that I thought was very interesting is, uh, I mean, it, uh, uh, of course, I don't know the lives of the emperors that much, although I, 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 I like history and I, I like to watch documentaries about it. But uh, uh, it was only with this book that I, I, I became aware of the Augustus uh, illnesses. And... Uh, when we read about it, how much he suffered, you know, that he had, a, like it says here, the sores that covered his skin. Uh, he felt a lot of pain. He was wrapped in bandages. Uh, he had problems with, um, I don't know, maybe <laughs> we will say asthma, bronchitis, or, you know, all the the problems that one can can have in the lungs and uh, and gay, it made him very fragile, um, excruciating headaches. So when we think about it, uh, even in 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 the days of today, it's not uncommon for us to see a person that suffers so many illnesses and pain. Uh, to become a very rational person and always complaining, always uh, putting the burden on others, uh, being rude because of the pain that they are going undergoing. And, uh, and imagine in his position as emperor, he could give himself to rage because sometimes, you know, this physical pain that uh, the spirit Umberto de, de Campos describes him, it can lead you to irrational behavior, to rage towards everyone because you, you do not conform with your situation. And what we see in his behavior is, is exactly the opposite. Despite of the pain he was suffering, he didn't think about inflicting pain to others through irrational decisions. On the contrary, he brought, he tried to bring everything that would bring more harmony and peace and enlightenment to his subjects. And to me, this per se is absolutely astonishing. And like we mentioned before, even to the point of, you know, uh, maintaining the purest tr family traditions, as uh, Umberto de Campos describes here, in not being uh, complying with the behaviors of those, even mm -hmm. that they are were very dear to him, were trying to promote and he was looking for exactly the opposite. So I, I, I think, you know, we should, we should ponder about it, meditate about it, because uh, we ourselves, when we are suffering any kind of illnesses or pain, and sometimes it's not even ours, just uh, one uh, of a loved one near to us, we may not behave as well <laughs> as Emperor Augustus, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Yeah, the I'm speechless. Man, it I imagine every time when I have friends in my home, I put at home, I clean, I buy I buy flowers, I cook. Then to receive people that I like. Then it's amazing this planning, like incarnate spirits, high level spirits, to prepare this kind of ambience to, to have Jesus between us. Then in many times nowadays, we look at our planet and think, oh, how many problems we have 
popping different countries and then I, maybe this is part of the plane too then we don't know yet but the same time 2000 years ago more than 2000 ago we prepared the ambience to have jazz maybe we are cleaning our planet to have better times we don't know yet, but I hope so. Yes, absolutely, Sonia. And then as we can read in the books by Divaldo Franco, uh, by the spirit, uh, Manuel Filomeno de Miranda, we have that series of the planetary transition, world of regeneration, and a uh, series of four books, actually. Uh, they talk so much about the Earth's renovation. And uh, it's always important that when we are talking about Earth's renovation, very much like we see here in this chapter, uh, we are not talking about, you know, Earth developing new flowers or new um, uh, animal life or human life. <clears throat> We are talking about attitudes like and spirits like we had this one that, of course, was prepared to come and to 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 get this position of emperor because we know that it was a very disputed position. And uh, and he like it says here, he was so different than the conqueror Julius Caesar right? He was uh, really mm, more um, uh, worried about bringing this reign of peace and harmony and uh, bringing a little uh, joy, happiness, and enlightenment, like it says here, he would uh, preside over popular festivals uh, and uh, and he would feel amazed to see how people would enjoy it. And we are not talking about the Roman circus, nothing of this sort, just, you know, really recreation for people as well, among all the, the other things. So we, we know that we are going through a time, uh, and of course, very well prepared, where we are going through a transition the same transition that they talk about here because now is the time for for Jesus the Christ himself to come to earth and to give uh, uh, more guidance to us right to show that he is the uh, the uh, the way uh, the way that we we we, sh we should we should follow the truth that we should follow and, and 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 so according to this this those the books by the the spirit Manuel Filomeno de Miranda that are published by Lial Publisher, we um we can see that there uh, all the spirits that are connected to earth, uh, even if they are not in a you know that the terms to change their themselves they will be they would be invited to return to earth to have another chance and to see if they can you know finally choose a better way of living for themselves and of course this is what we are watching happening in our planet now a moment where uh, temporarily it seems that um, there is more bad than good in our planet. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is not true. You know, there are there is more good happening, and but it's still there are some bad that's those spirits that have been rebellious to their inner change try to maintain. So they will have this lifetime, their lifetime, you know, to decide what they are going to do. But little by little, we will be seeing this less and less. Of course, we cannot predict how many years this is going to take. So we are not trying to bring any kind of uh, prophecy here saying, oh, wait, that the world is going to get better. Maybe it will get worse 
first and then better. Mm. We don't know the extent and the length of things. But like you said, Sonia, this is not, uh, let's say, unsupervised. I'm not going to say planned because the plan was um, you didn't learn the lesson. I'm going to give you one more chance to return to school and do right this time. But then you have your free will. So we are returning to school. The aim, the plan is for us to do right. But we can still, because of our free will, maintain this rebelliousness of saying, I know better, I don't want this, I want something different. And this will may impact in our progress and this will may impact in us being able to return again. But this is what ha is happening, you know, the mercy, the justice and the mercy of God planned for all, uh, all of us to succeed. But it gives us our own choices, our own time for that to happen. So it it might get worse than better in the in the, the future years. And okay. and uh, but it doesn't mean that it's not being supervised and that the aim is not for us to see transformation. Maybe we will not see that in our lifetimes out. Maybe it will take 30, 50, 100 years for this to come more visible, but it, it is happening. We see so much change. We see our youth today, and not only the youth, even as adults that have to learn from different generations, uh, different values that we are now putting into check and changing our position, being more humane, and embracing more, you know, all, you know, the different citizens, uh, brothers and sisters there are, there are in the world. We have been worried about, uh, you know, the future of planet Earth and uh, the phone, uh, the, 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 uh, the ecological aspects and that uh, all, all of that that can impact life in the future so things are happening uh, and uh, it will definitely happen but I don't think no one can actually come and say oh there will be a complete transformation in 20 years or in 50 years in 100 years mm -hmm. because it depends on us I mean if we were able to ask God when can the change come? Probably God would 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 say today, if we will. Mm. So, but it's a collective effort. Okay, we can do our part. I can. I do. I do not have to wait for others to change. So I change. Okay, people are changing. That let me change. No, we like. Mahatma Gandhi said, you have to be the change you want to see in the world because we have to inspire and motivate others. And we see here, but by this example, you know, the emperor was motivating others, his subjects, to also act more harmoniously, not looking for, you know, uh, disputes all the time to to focus their attention in in enlightening themselves in in, the, in themselves in appreciating beauty like they say here the the marble statues that were being raised and all of this it, it's to inspire beauty it's not necessarily just to mark there i was the emperor that did that no it they inspire beauty when we look at a statue that uh touches your soul right that time we had the opportunity to have gospel yeah to to follow and then and we know this inner transformation sometimes not easy then the lessons are simple but it, it's a challenge to follow every item we we are learning here but to know there is a a plan 
to protect us, to guide us. It's always something to support us every time when if you we believe, oh, just me, I'm alone in this way. No, you are not alone. We are not alone. This is something bigger than than our imagination mm. could know about. Then I think it's a light to follow this. There is a message, not just the history in this chapter. There is a message in underlying. And, and you see, uh, I mean, uh, when we think about what the the author, the spirit, and once again, it is important for us to mention that the way the spirits dictate, uh, you know, the, the those knowledges to to the mediums. In this case, the uh, a medium that is so uh, well known by his integrity, uh, that is Francisco Candido Xavier, you know, uh, the spirit uh, has access to the files, so to say, in our in our uh, current way of talking, of what happened. It is not the imagination of the the author here. It is uh, the author having access to the, you know, to the spirit <laughs> library, you know, and and other forms that he, he can impart the knowledge as it were to us. So here, when Umberto de Campos says, uh, look, um, we are talking about 2020 more right because it was even before the birth of jesus uh mm -hmm. 2020 and 30 years ago we had a, a time of uh, an emperor that was conscious that wanted peace that wanted to lead uh, the people into a righteous life to enlighten, propitiating them, knowledge and art and uh, recreation and all that. I mean, uh, if, if that was possible then, how can it not be possible today since we are talking about the law of progress, we are progressing constantly, maybe not everyone at the same pace, but we are all progressing. And, and so it's 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 so obvious that we could have that and much more today if we just allow it if we we be responsible and not oblivious like saying it's not in my hands it is completely in our hands and yeah. uh we just have to understand that there is this is our responsibility as well uh and 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 i think that i mean when we read that and we think about uh about the lesson that it it brings to us by a true story you know it's not just the lesson and it's not just a, a parable it it's no it's a true story and if we go and and, and look at the history books it will say that it was a time of har more harmony and um, than the other uh, Roman emperors. So it's not just that we are basing our knowledge and some people will say in, his, in, in the knowledge of the spirits, which we, we should perhaps, but yeah, this history tells us that as well. So I, I, uh, I, I think that should be an inspiration for us to... Yeah. Like you said, Sonia, it's not it's not an easy it's not a, an easy uh, situation at all uh, for us to go into this uh, changing ourselves. But there is no other way. If we want 
to feel in peace and feel at least for the time being relative happiness, there is no other way. No other way for us. Mm. Yeah. So I I was um um uh thinking that we should uh, continue with this book once a month perhaps uh while we also study the book for by Juana de Angelis those are 30 beautiful lessons that we have in this book right um uh, and finally we have the, the book in English which is amazing great and you can all find it at the Fabi publisher and uh, F-A-E-B publisher. And um, and uh, we we thank the spirits because they, they are giving us, you know, this knowledge, this understanding through the, 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 the spiritual, spiritist literature that we have. So it's here for us to see. It's just a matter of us committing and trying to dive deeper even when we are reading you know i remember the first time that i read like i said it it amazes me to see how much he was suffering but only now when i was talking to you i was thinking oh my god uh, uh, his personality could could have been completely different because of the pain when when we are in pain we are angry with the world we <clears> want <throat> work to suffer as well i mean not we we hope <laughs> this is not how, how we feel now but it, it, it's it's what we see more often right and, and now we see that and we see that uh uh all the circumstances to so that Jesus could come in, you know, in a better environment, uh, you know, spiritual atmosphere, and all the the, the things that, that God would propitiate and the spirits would do, it's absolutely uh, an example to touch us as all, and to remember that uh, we are not just a little boat drifting away there is planning and protection in the course of this boat that uh, is us right 